Nottingham, number 11, brings Sheriff Blackthorne secretly back to Nottingham ahead of King Richard's invading army. Can he convince Maid Marian to form an alliance before it's too late? We've got the full review right here. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Nottingham number 11 by Mad Cave Studios. We're going to talk about what happened in the last issue because it's been a while. What's happened in this issue, what we liked, what we didn't like, and the final score. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated. Let's talk about the credits. This issue was written by David Hazan with art for the internal pages and the cover by Shane Connery Volk. Colors by Luca Romano and letters by Justin Birch. Before we dig into the media issue, let's recap what happened in issue number 10 because it's been a really long time since the last issue. Sheriff Blackthorne and Robin of Loxley formed an uneasy alliance because they were both dedicated to saving King Richard from, from his kidnappers, which led them in all kinds of <laughs> travels and travails through uh, Rome and uh, Greece and a number of different countries on the southern, south, or I should say, southwestern part of Europe. Eventually, uh, there was a parting of ways where Blackthorn was left to fend for himself to his own devices, presumably killed, and Robin joining up with King Richard to come back to Nottingham and to kill Prince John and anyone else who got in their way for being usurpers of the crown and the throne. Now we catch up with Sheriff Blackthorne in issue number 11. And so what's happened is the sheriff has secretly snuck back into Nottingham to find out what's going on and what's been happening in his absence. So we learn, and we saw this in, in flashbacks in the previous issues, that Maid Marian is really orchestrating the full takeover of Nottingham and overthrowing Guy of Gisborne and taking control of the city. She's you've been using Little John as the front to say he's really the guy in charge and leading the Merry Men to take over the city, but really it's Maid Marian who's been acting as the mastermind and the puppeteer behind everything that's been going on. When Sheriff Blackthorn, Blackthorn infiltrates the city, he finds the captain of the guard is now a beggar and a drunk on the city. Uh, most of the guards have been captured or killed, and Blackthorn says, look, we've got to do something because King Richard is coming, and he doesn't care who's in charge. He doesn't care about whether it's the Merry Men or the regular citizens or anything else. He's going to come with a show of force and he's going to wipe everybody out, whether whether they're on his side or not. And we've got to stop him before he destroys the entire city. And he says, the only way we can do that is we've got to gather the remaining loyal guards and the Merry Men and get them to come together in an alliance to defend the city. So later, uh, the captain sneaks into a gathering of rebel guards for some of the loyal followers who are still left. And they said, you know, we've got to do something because if King Richard shows up, he's going to destroy everything. And Maid Marion is the one who's like creating all these problems for us. So we've got to get to the grain reserves. The drunk captain shows up and it's like, I've got an idea. We can, we can, we can make this work if we work together. Uh, and they said, who are you? You were the drunk captain that deserted us and left us to fend for ourselves. And suddenly he shows up with Sheriff Blackthorn right behind him. And everybody's like, oh, ooh, this is a big deal. Sheriff Blackthorn has returned. Everybody sort of gathers around him. But while they're starting to possibly form an uneasy alliance, the Merry Men show up, show up in a raid and they attack the inn where they're meeting. And there's a big fight. But eventually Sheriff Blackthorn is captured and he's brought before Maid Marion. Maid Marian says, well, look at you. Where have you been all this time? He says, I was fighting for the return of King Richard, but now I see that my the error of my ways because King Richard is coming back, but he's going to destroy everybody and everything because he believes you're all traitors. And he doesn't care if Maid Marian, if you're hiding behind Little John or not, he's going to kill you just like he kills everybody else. And we've got to band together to defend the city against um, King Richard's return with the army that's going to crush and destroy Nottingham. She doesn't believe him at first, but then she goes outside and say, look, it's even snowing. It, it, the weather isn't working for us. We've got the city walls. We have got everything under control. Even if he does show up, we're, we're more than equipped to defend the city against King Richard. And at the last minute, Sheriff Blackthorne says, look closely. That's not snow. It's ash. And then when she looks closer to at the countryside, she sees Loxley and all the surrounding towns are now on fire and the army is coming. Uh, so she knows that she has to prepare, uh, but she's not sure what to do with Blackthorn. 
So he gets cocked on the head and they drag him down to the dungeons where he's there, where he's um, dumped alongside Guy Gisborne and Friar Tuck. And it looks like maybe some bad things have been going down in Sheriff Blackthorne's absence. We mentioned earlier that this series has been on hiatus or at least a break. And you might want me wondering, you don't even remember the series was out there. Yeah, it's out there. Issue 10, 10 came out in August of 2022. That is a year and seven months, longer than an 18 month hiatus. Now, if you've been following along with Mad Cave and Nottingham in general, you know that they had some tales of Nottingham titles in between there written by some guest uh, writers and guest artists. But yeah, from a, from a narrative perspective, this, series has been on break for over 18 months which is a long time and so we'll keep track of it but yeah if you're wondering how far back it is that's that's how far back it goes what do we like about this issue uh i mean the the prevalent air of taking a classic story like robin hood and twisting it turning it on its head continues which is the kind of the novelty and the highlight of the series you know casting Maid marion as a mastermind and puppeteer uh, that takes over the city in King Richard's absence is, is definitely a unique twist. Uh, bl casting Blackthorn as a, a sort of an anti-hero, a, a villain, but a villain trying to do his best to serve and do his duty is also an interesting twist. And then setting him up now to be the rebel that potentially was going to save Nottingham against all the forces that traditionally would have been seen as heroes, but now may be not necessarily villains, but at least ruthless people serving their own agendas is definitely a unique twist. So it's all the it's all the classic tropes and the stereotypes turned on their head. And that and Hazan has definitely maintained that sense of unique uh, perspectives uh, and also giving you like very gritty action, gritty, uh, hard hitting dialogue. Uh, some surprises in there with what happens in the last page. I won't spoil it here, but there's definitely some surprises there. And just giving you an overall sense that this is a unique, special, creative uh, type of take on the Robin Hood mythology that uh, you're really just not going to find anywhere else. It's very intriguing, very entertaining, and, and very much an engrossing read. What didn't we like about this issue? Not much beyond a minor nitpick or two. Despite the very long hiatus between issues 10 and 11, Hazan hasn't skipped a beat. The writing is on point, uh, the story and the narrative, and the plots and the ideas, they're all hitting their marks. So anything that you point to as a flaw would be minor and doesn't detract from the story at all. Let's switch gears to talk about the art. Shane Connery Vokes style is one of the highlights of this series since the very beginning. And much like the writing from David Hazan, hasn't skipped a beat at all. If anything, Vokes style is more detailed, more expressive, more textured, uh, more uh, visually engaging. I mean, the art in this looks fantastic. Now, granted, some people will say, well, his anatomy and his way he kind of gives you sort of exaggerated features on faces and bodies um, is, is over stylized and maybe not your cup of tea. I get that. But at the same time, it works to give everybody, every character that's in the story, a sense of presence and power and just over and visual distinctiveness that you're not going to find anywhere else. The art in this issue looks great and some of the best work we've seen from Connery Vogue. Final thoughts, what do we think about Nottingham number 11 from Mad Cave Studios? Great action, great pacing, great dialogue, twists and turns, a gritty, uh, almost surreal twist on the classic Robin Hood legend. And you're fully invested in understanding what's going to happen next because all roads have led to this point and we can't wait to find out what happens in the next issue which i believe might be the finale therefore we're going to give nottingham number 11 from mad cave studios a nine out of ten it's a good score it's a deserved score and this is a fairly entertaining comic if you want uh, something a little bit different outside the uh, superhero normal type comic stuff so what do you think of Nottingham? Have you been keeping up with the series? Did you forget it was out there because it took such a long hiatus? And what do you think about sort of alternate twisted versions of Robin Hood or possibly other classic stories? We'd like to, hear, like to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Otherwise, stay tuned through the outro for the next review.